All right, so what am I looking at? Let's start again. So this is a typical rack okay. that you'd have in any communication um, or data center or in the server room. Mm -hmm. So what we are explaining here, what we are exhibiting is the different types of patch panels that you could use in your data closet. So the first one is the space saver mm -hmm. and it's a Keystone 24 port, but it's only half a U. All right. <clears throat> One U is about one inch and three quarter, mm -hmm. but this is using, I think it's about seven eight. Mm -hmm. So this allows you to put 48 pots in a one U space. Okay. So instead of having this 48 pots like this in a two U, oh. I'm going to have 48 of this in just the one U. Oh, that's like right. That. So there's there's more space in between these ones. Yeah, there's more space in, in between than this here. Oh. than here. And this That's is made by Keystone. Um, this is a Keystone. Keystone. Keystones are generic. Mm -hmm. Everyone can make Keystones. Mm -hmm. They are known proprietary. So you make them. Mm -hmm. Even though all the major manufacturers, they have their versions of the Keystones. Mm -hmm. But these are what we have. So this is a 24 port unloaded Keystone patch panel. Mm -hmm. And this is how we terminate them. Now the next one is also an unloaded patch panel from Belden. So Belden also makes mm -hmm. it like this. And you could put only Belden jacks in their unloaded panel now what we have here is a loaded patch panel so whatever form factor these ones come in that is what you get oh unloaded means it doesn't have the boxes inside it's empty you buy them empty uh, like that and you, that's what you the populate. difference is you can decide to put a category three yes. category eight category, I understand whatever category now. you want in these ones right and whatever colors that you want so when you say terminating a 110 loaded patch panel, you're talking about this. About this guy here. Yes, right. Because this is fixed. And if it, I get it in a category six, Ciao. it's forever going to be a category, category six. six. I cannot change it. But this one, I can Completely today customizable. put a category 5E. Mm -hmm. The next day I can mm -hmm. take that out and put a category six. Gorgeous. So this gives me the flexibility of right. changing in terms of colors as well. Mm -hmm. So that is a keystone, and you notice that we've left one use spaces between yes, them. Yes, that's right. The one use spaces allows us to put our switches through. Mm -hmm. So you can put your switch in here and then patch from here into the switches. Mm -hmm. Right. If I put a 48 port switch in here, the top ones go into the top part of the switch, just as we've indicated here. <laughs> so all the panels on the top patch into the upper level, and the switch below. In the same fashion, we put another switch here, wow. and then all the ones on here, all the ones on here will go into the switch below it. What we are exhibiting here is a 48 port from Comscope. So we decided to use all the top ones with the blue jacks to indicate our data. And you could use any color Oh, coded. you color coded by voice data or yes. right. So these ones are all my data. And I use these ivory colors for my access points. Nice. So access points one to six. And on the same panel, mm -hmm. my cameras are indicated by green. Gorgeous. So from camera one to camera six. And for my printers on the network, oh, all the printers wow. that I have, I used white. And then finally, the televisions that I have, I also used black for representation. Okay. So it's the same panel. So you could have a, like a legend somewhere posted that this yes. is okay. There's a downside to this doing this though. The downside is if the customer calls you after one year and says, I want to add two more TVs, you have to be able to remember, remember. that his TVs were using black jacks. Mm -hmm. So you always have to carry those jacks with you. The next one below is also a keystone patch panel, which is unloaded, mm -hmm. but that has the angled form factor. Right. It's just by preference. So this is an angled, and I decided to put my data on one side and my voice on the other side. Probably makes the cable management a bit cleaner, right? Yes. And that is how we terminate on these angled ones. Then finally, we have another keystone here, and this allows you yes. to populate it with different stuff. So I have stuff for my AV, the unloaded. 
right there on loaded. I can even put an HDMI in here. Shut up, that's right, right? yeah. So I have an HDMI in here. It's really flexible. Yeah, it's very flexible for you to do. And at the same way I did everything here, if I did not have space, I could use the space saver. Right. That could work as well. Okay. Now on the back, this is Let's how we ended around. up dressing them. This is the magic. Right, so in, this is what we teach the students to do in class. Mm -hmm. So that is the space saver, dressed up nicely. This is the building. And you notice that the building has the cable support. Right. So the cables are resting on that cable support that's here. But on these ones here, mm -hmm. on the loaded patch panel, we do not have a cable support. So we decided to bundle the cables like this so they don't sag and come out. So individually there you have all of these wires terminated. Yeah. Wow. And the Comscope has the cable support as well. So we had to terminate it like that. You get it? Oh. It looks like the enemies from the Matrix, these things. And Gorgeous. this is our shielded. So we just okay. explain how right, the, sh the, shielded. the shielded cables look like on the back. So the panel is entirely shielded. It, when I pop them up, it look, just looks like the it's gorgeous. The other one. Wow. The only difference is that it's got a shielding attached to it. So this is a regular patch panel. So, but oh, with, the, the... It looks like that. But they're shielded but now. These are shielded. So once Whoa, you terminate that's it... a lot of protection. You have to. So the foil that it's on it, has to make contact with that. So, what so kind these of, are terminated. What kind we, of clients need the extra shielding oh, for and protection? When you're working in areas that has high um, noise, such as the airports, the hospitals, all mm. that, that is so much interference in the inter Oh, so all of this, all of that here is preventing the interference. Yes, yeah, so the shielding and the foil, it's Gorgeous. wrapping the cables and blocking out any signals that are supposed to get on. So if I'm having internet problems, it could be the type of cable I've used and if it has shielding or not. For residential applications, it's not too significant. It's, no, but... For commercial mm -hmm. applications, especially the airports. Ciao. You know, with the airports, how many guys are using walkie-talkies, right. radars, microwaves, all types of communications going on at the mm -hmm. airports. So when that happens, communication becomes a problem. And we need in the airports, data sensitivity is very important. So by having shielded cables being used for most of the applications, it's able to minimize um, delays in terms of um, downtown calls by interferences on these regular cables that do not have any shoulder wow. there. And you notice that they are much more thicker just because of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So a shielded cable goes on a shielded patch panel. These on shielded right. cables would go on a shielded jack. So that is how we teach our students the right way to terminate. And obviously we show them how to bundle the cables properly mm -hmm. using the cable cord. So if I knew how to do all of these things, could I work at a data center? Absolutely, you could work at a data center.